Hey guys, welcome back to the channel where I talk all things World Chase Tag. In today's episode, I'll be discussing the structural genius that we call the quad, and just how to use it to your advantage. If you've ever seen World Chase Tag, then you'd know that this is what the quad looks like. When observing the quality of structural design, it's important to note the strongest and weakest points of the entire thing. In this case, strongest and weakest is metaphorical as opposed to literal. First, let me explain why and how the quad is so uniquely and finely tuned for a sport such as tag. I'll also be explaining where the weak points are and how to take advantage of them for your benefit. I would say the quad's biggest strength lies not in its individual obstacles, but the way these obstacles chain together. The first example of this would be the interplay between the obstacles in the rear section. The last one absolutely blew my mind when I figured it out. The mountain is easily the tallest obstacle on the quad. It's also linked to the tilted cube and the loading bay in a way that creates a specific pathway for the evader and the chaser to take. This means that there is a balanced entry and exit point. Notice how it might be difficult for an evader to enter the mountain from the tilted cube, yet super easy to enter it from beside the loading bay. Chances are this was probably intentional. We can also see this between the front line and the ridge. The chaser can use the front line in helping to mantle the ridge and close down distance. The chaser can also use it to close down distance on an evader running westward down the quad. Not to mention all the various jukes and dodges that evaders can make using the front line as you approach the ridge. The last obstacle combo that deserves an honorable mention would be Lazy Boy, the sisters, and part of the front line. You ever notice that whenever a player does take the guac trap, they always start from the front line onto the Lazy Boy through the sisters and over and up onto the tilted cube and eventually the mountain. It can also be used backwards from the tilted cube to the sisters and so forth. This also creates the only possible path that is capable of letting an evader climb the mountain from the northwest side of the quad. I can say from experience that actually making all of these timely jumps without breaking your neck is easier said than done. I believe that the sisters and sword of the mountain are the only obstacles that actually offer transitional direction change. But the obstacles I really want to focus on here are the sisters and the lazy boy. Let me explain. In World Chase Tech, there are two different types of obstacles, one used for transition and the other being for clock dissipation or idling. The sisters would be used for the former, while the lazy boy a rough illustration of the latter. The way both are connected, you can almost argue that together they create an entirely new area. I present to you the lazy Lazy sisters, or the sister boys? Whatever the case, knowing how to control this position is crucial in, well, winning. The evader can idle, but I'd argue that there are much better places for the evader to be than in this area. But what it is that makes this route so powerful for evaders is the strange combination of bars, allowing for this quick directional change that can't be seen on any other parts of the quad. If you have enough distance from your evader to begin with, you should be able to mantle the front line and quickly continue over the sisters to the tilted cube. Instantly gives you an increase in distance. The most unique thing the sisters has to offer isn't its three alternatives for direction change, it's the flat and firm footing even at a higher level, offering much less control and much less risk of falling or tripping. But watch out, the chaser can use this strange burst of speed just as efficient. As most strategies in World Chase Tag have become, it is a double-edged sword. Because most of what one player can do, the other player should be able to do as well, right? And so, in this specific scenario, I would say the advantage still lies in the evader's hands. Because yes, hypothetically the speed from the chaser and the evader would be the same, but the evader has direction change, and the chaser doesn't really have that option unless they're trying to cut a corner. Another strange thing to be noted is the actual quad design itself. Although tweaked to near perfection, any sane person could notice as you pan out, the EQ increases from the center, especially near the edges. We pan in, the EQ lessens. But why? The quad designers themselves, the Duvos, know how chases play out. They'd also know that most encounters happen near the edges. Plus, there's less need for cover in the center, because if the evader's caught there, they can just run in a straight line and reach cover eventually. What I'm trying to get at with this video is how to take advantage of this design. Again, this goes for both the chaser and the evader. Chasers need to figure out how to do is to herd the evaders consistently into these lower EQ areas. The evaders need to think rationally and avoid the chaser's insistent baiting. But the real question is, how would either player do this? It is easier said than done, but one common tactic is used by Apex player Michael Sliger. From what I've seen, the Lazy Boy section does seem to be the lowest EQ section on the quad. So Michael's tactic is to round the ridge, leading them right to it. Track down, Abdullah, and he goes through the Lazy Boy! He just moves! I mean, it's worked every time so far. 
He is the master baiter after all. If the chaser is northwest of the tilted cube and the evader happens to be running over the sisters, a great strategy that I've discussed in past videos is to cut inward towards the center of the quad. However, if you do follow them over the sisters, cut over the lazy boy. This will ensure that they don't make it to the ridge and can't idle behind the lazy boy, therefore getting caught out in the open behind the front line. The last open court tag opportunity would be if you flush them into center court from the center of the mountain, because if you're on the mountain slope, you have height and they have nothing to hide behind. This probably won't happen in a normal match, but we have seen it before. That's all I have for you guys this time. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.